You might be thinking to yourself, who is that ugly loser on my screen? No worries, it's just me, your favorite artist you're obviously subscribed to. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to shade skin. I realize I haven't done a video on skin in like four years and I mean, that video is heavily outdated, so I might as well redo it. Skin is probably one of the easiest stuff to shade, and you can also be super stylistic with it, so you can show a lot of artistic expression with it, and it'll still turn out nice. The only hard part about shading skin is that you kind of have to learn anatomy to do it, so that kind of sucks, but other than that, it's kind of fun to shade. So here's just a preview of how the skin is gonna turn out at the end. If you wanna follow this video exactly, I recommend getting the digital art software I'm using, Clip Studio Paint, who is also the sponsor for today's video. If you're a beginner looking to become better at drawing, I recommend starting out with Clip Studio Paint. This software is amazing as it supports beginner-friendly features such as an entire catalog of brushes to choose from, 3D drawing figures that help you plan poses, and complete support for animation. This is the program that I've used for all of my illustrations since 2019, and I don't think I'm going to switch soon. They also have a free trial version that lets you test all the features you want. If you want to use my brushes that I'm using for Clip Studio Paint, it's available on my Patreon for free, so you don't have to pay. The link to Clip Studio Paint and the brushes I use will be in the description below. So before actually coloring the skin, I'm going to show you two things. Number one, skin palettes, and number two, shading techniques. So color is very hard to teach because there's not a correct answer to one base color. There's not, you can pick different, a bunch of different shading colors for one base color, but I'm going to show you a general pattern you should follow when you're picking a shade color for your skin tone. So for your base color, literally, it could be any color in the rainbow. This color, that color, uh, literally any color in the planet. When you get to your first shading color, what you're gonna wanna do is follow this general rule. You're gonna wanna change your hue down to shift towards blue. The same thing if you're on this green side, you're gonna wanna shift it down towards blue. From yellow, it's gonna go this way, and from lime green, it's gonna go this way. Then, what you're gonna wanna do is go down in value and increase in saturation. Now, how much do you increase in value and saturation? It depends on the location of your color in the box. So generally, the rule is, is you wanna follow a curve like this where this is saturation and this is value. So let's see an example. I have this light color right here that's right here in the color wheel. We're gonna shift the hue down so that it's right here. We're gonna shift the saturation so that it's more right here. And then we're gonna go a little bit down in value so that it's right here. And you're gonna see that that is a very perfect shading color you can choose. Now let's see this darker skin tone. So this dark skin tone is right here, like right in the middle, right about here. So we're gonna shift the hue down. We're gonna decrease the value, or actually I'm gonna increase the saturation first. And remember, I'm gonna increase it a little bit because now we're like in this middle box right here and I'm gonna put the value down more so that it's right there. And see? Now, to me, this looks a little bit saturated, so I'm gonna move it less. I'm gonna move it to the left a little bit so that it's less saturated. And to me, that is perfect. So remember, you wanna follow a general curve like this. And now I'm just gonna pick a random color, which is blue. This blue's in the middle of the color wheel right here. And it's very like down here. So what I'm gonna do is go towards purple, and then I'm gonna increase the value down and I'm gonna increase the saturation by a little bit. And we get a color like that. So I don't really like that color, so I'm gonna go a little bit more down in value and a little bit more in saturation. And I think that's a better color. Maybe I'll, actually, I think it was hue that was the problem. That's how you generally pick a shading color for a skin tone. I can't train your eye for color. You're just gonna have to eyeball whether you need a little bit more saturation, a little more value, or a little bit more hue. But this is just a general pattern that you're gonna wanna follow. That curve right here. So I'm gonna show you the four shading techniques I use in this video, because I feel like if I show you these techniques, it's gonna be easier for you to replicate what I'm gonna be doing in this video. So the first technique I'm going to be showing you has to do with blurring. Here I have a skin ball, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a hard shadow on the edge of this sphere. Now, what you're gonna do is wanna take your, you're gonna wanna take the blur brush and very lightly press in the middle of the skin ball. Like that. And then what you're gonna wanna do is go more towards the middle and press even harder. 
So this creates like, like a dynamic of hard shadow and then very soft shadow. Then what this is going to lead to is what I call edge shading. So imagine I had a dark ball, okay? And then I had a sun hitting on the back of this ball right here. So same thing applies. What you're gonna wanna do is lightly apply the, br uh, the blur in the middle of the ball and then very hard on like the very middle of the ball. So then you have the dynamic from hard shadow to soft shadow. So the reason this shading technique is very important is because imagine you had a shape. Let's say this is your torso. So when you're trying to shade something that looks 3D, what you really wanna do is emphasize the shape of that object. So let's pretend this is my torso, okay? So let's say I want this torso to be like looking this way kind of. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna shade the side of the torso like this. And so now it looks like this torso is facing this way. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edge shade the middle of this torso right here. So now my skin torso looks soft, but I also clearly know which direction it's looking in. And it kind of emphasizes like a cube structure. It might not make sense now, but I trust me, it's gonna make more sense later when I start doing the shading. Next thing I'm gonna teach is an eyedrop shape. So basically what an eyedrop shape is when you press very initially hard on your tablet, and then you kind of flick your wrist and then you end up with less pressure than you did in the beginning, which will create like an eyedrop shape. The reason this eyedrop shape is so important is because it's gonna lead into our next shading technique called the eyedrop shading. Wow. Eyedrop shading is when you have this eyedrop shape and then you take the smudge tool and you kind of circle around this side. You circle around one side of the raindrop. like that, leaving the other side hard. What you're gonna wanna do is take your blur brush and blur it on the other side in the middle, just like the edge shading. So then you have a shape kind of like this. Now, without context, this shape kind of looks weird, but trust me, when we get into the body, you're gonna see this shape a lot. So now we can start off with her head. So the first thing I always do when shading her head is I always start with underneath the hair. So this is pretty easy. All you want to do is make strokes that are pretty thick underneath each hair strand that she has on her head. Like when you're dealing with hair folds that are kind of far away from her head, you kind of want to make this part a little thicker like this, because this suggests that this hair piece right here is farther away from her head than these ones right here, because these ones lay on like right on top of her head, but this one's pretty far away. So we're gonna make this part more thick than these parts right here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shade her eyelids. So when I shade eyelids, I usually just follow the line art that I create. All I'm gonna do is make a stroke that follows the top of her eyelid like that. This is where that weird shading technique comes into play. What I'm gonna do is two little teardrops that kind of tuck into the crevices of her like eyelid. And then I'm gonna get my smudge tool and then I'm just gonna circle, do a little circle. So that's like where the shading technique is kind of like applied at. The next thing I'm gonna do is shade her nose. And the way I shade noses are very weird. So I'm gonna show you like alternatives and then show you the way I do it. What a lot of people do is that they add like a little circle on top of the character's like nose line. They smudge it a little bit on like on the top and then they blur it on the top. Like that. That's what they usually do. Another alternative that seems more realistic, they add like a little triangle that follows like the shape of the nose. So. Pretend like that's the shape of your nose. And then they add like a triangle right here. And then they fill it in. And then they slightly blur this side of the nose. So that's like a more realistic approach. Um, remember, it's all dependent on your art style. My art style, th this might seem kind of weird, is that I add like a square right here. And then I slightly blur the edge of it like that and then i might go back and just kind of lighten it with the airbrush tool yeah i like that that's how i shade noses it's kind of weird but it reminds me of like a character having like a band-aid on their nose and i think it looks kind of nice remember that shading skin has a lot of expression to it so just do whatever you think looks good in your art style
So that's how I shade noses. It might not be realistic, but it makes the drawing look nice, which is all that matters. The next thing I'm gonna add is just some shadow on the side of her face, like right here. Uh, nothing too much, just because I just want it to be like slightly, like a slight shadow. So I'm just gonna add like a stroke right here and then I'm gonna blur this top part of it and leave this heart shadow right here. So that's all the basic stuff. Now I'm gonna go back and add like small little details. So the first detail I'm gonna add is, I'm gonna do like a light stroke like this and add it below her eyebrow like that. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. And then I'm gonna add two triangles underneath her eyebrows like that. The next thing I'm gonna do is add eyebrow wrinkles my character is supposed to look angry, so you're gonna have like eyebrow wrinkles right here. So what I'm gonna do is add a teardrop shape on these eyes right here. And then I'm gonna take my smudge tool and I'm gonna do the circle thing, like I said. And remember to leave the other side, like this part hard. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna go back with your blur tool and you're gonna blur the middle of, the middle of it. And then I'm gonna go over, make it a little bit lighter with the airbrush tool and just go over with my base color. Mm, I might smudge this part a little bit more. And yeah, right, th right there is like our eyebrow wrinkles to make her look more angry. And then I'm gonna add maybe some shading under her eyes, very lightly. Yeah, I like that. And then one thing I forgot to mention is that when hair, remember, is far away, uh, then the shadow it creates is gonna be more blurry. So you just wanna lightly go over the shadow with just a blur tool, just very lightly. Okay, now that we have our hard shadows done with our second base color, what we're gonna go, uh, what we're gonna do is now add more softer shading. So that means with the airbrush. So I'm gonna grab my shading color, my airbrush. And the first thing I always do is I add like a shadow uh, over her nose. So I'm gonna make a new layer just to like be able to adjust its opacity. So that's the shadow. And then I'm gonna go back and just kind of edit it to how much opacity I want it to be. Then I'm gonna add her blush. So I'm gonna take my second shading color and add a little bit of red to it so that it looks like blush. So like that. And then I'm just gonna adjust the opacity just to be around what I want. I want something more orange. Yeah, I like that. So that's pretty much like my soft shading colors. So now we're gonna get to our second shading color, which is this color right here. You wanna be careful and rarely use this color because a lot of beginners tend to overpower this color uh, over this color, which makes it seem a little off. So you wanna have like a nice balance between having a lot of this color and some of this color. And the first thing I always do with this color is I always add it underneath these hair parts. This is probably gonna be the place where you most use this color. Uh, everywhere else, you're not really going to use it that much. So you, you basically just want to go over everything with this color up here. And then for this part, since the shadow is getting farther, what you're going to do is you're going to make an outline right here. And then you're going to add it normally like this. And then you're going to take your smudge tool and you're just going to smudge the inside of it. Be careful not to smudge the, uh, like the, out, the out part, so like the edge of it. Don't smudge that part. Okay, and then you're going to take your blur tool and just slightly blur it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our blur tool and we're gonna blur just like the middle parts of these strokes right here, so just the middle. Nothing too much, nothing too overpowering, just a light blur and that's it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this color and we're gonna add it to our eyelids. What I do is I basically just add this color on top of the eyelids like this. So this is pretty much the only place where I put it. I don't, I don't add it to the eye drop shape that we added in between the crevices of her eyelids. I just put it on top of it, like that. Now that we have all that, I'm gonna go ahead and do her lips. So for her lip color, I usually just use a slightly more red version of the second base color. Uh, really, the, the, remember this depends on your skin tone, but I'm just gonna pick a more red version of um, my second shading color. The way her lips are gonna be is kind of weird since she's doing like a smirk like this, which you can't really do in real life. So usually what I just do is I add like a little ball like this, like a little oval, like that. And then I'm just gonna blur the bottom of it. And then take a darker color of this lip color. I'm gonna go over my lip 
with this color. Or I'm gonna go over the actual mouth with this color. So then I have that. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my uh, shading color and I'm gonna add these little circles on the edges of it. And then with my smudge tool, I'm gonna just kind of rub the outer sides of it. And then I'm gonna take a white, my marker tool, and I'm just gonna add two little shines to it. And yeah, that's my lips. Nothing too complicating, just because it's like a little small mouth. Now let's get to the ear. The ear is a pretty complex shape, but I'll try to make it as easy as I can. So what you're gonna wanna do is take your second shade color and then make this kind of outline with your ear. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is fill in all of the inside of the ear from here. Okay, now take your smudge tool and in this like ear flab right here, just go back and forth on the two shading colors so that it looks like this is going inside of here. And then what you're gonna wanna do is take this shade, uh, the shading color again and just add shading underneath this fold right here, like that. And then take your blur tool and just slightly blur underneath here. Remember, just keep your hard shadows and don't, don't lose all of your hard shadows. Now what you're gonna do is take your second shading color and add this color to the bottom of this part right here. Like that and then take your smudge tool and just kind of circle smudge right here. And then take your blur and lightly blur it in the same place that you did, like that. Then with your uh, second shading color, what you're gonna do is go towards the edge of here and then add a little bit more thickness to like right by this earlobe or whatever you call it. And then go up here and then add an outline right there. So then you have this kind of shape. I'm gonna make this protrude a little bit farther. Okay, and then take your blur tool, blur right here, and then blur right there. So now you have that kind of shape. And then, yeah, that's the inside of the ear. And now for the outside of the ear, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a stroke right here. and then I'm gonna shade the bottom of it like that. And then I'm just gonna blur this middle part right here, and then the middle of this stroke right here. And yeah, that's my ear. Uh, I might add some airbrush tool just to make it softer. Around like right there. So yeah, nothing too bad. You might wanna play around with the shading of the ear a little bit since a lot of anime art styles have very different ears. Just play around with the shape of your ear. I might just show you how to do eyeshadow. So this is usually what I do for eyeshadow. I create two little circles on my character's eyes like this. Be sure to follow the perspective of her eyes. Okay. It doesn't have to be anything perfect or anything because I'm gonna blur it anyways. Then what you're gonna do is take your blur uh, tool and slightly blur this part and then heavily blur the outside of it. Now you're able to heavily blur the outside of it because since this is makeup, this doesn't really follow shading rules because this is like what the character did on her eyes. So even if you wanted to blur all of it, you know, that's fine. Then after you get like your shape of your makeup, then we're gonna do the shading of the makeup. And this is different. You actually have to follow shading rules for the actual shading of the makeup. So what I'm gonna do is grab my shading color for the uh, eyeshadow, and I'm really just gonna add shadow where my eyelid is, so like that. Uh, nothing too hard. And then I'm gonna take my airbrush tool and just add a gradient on the bottom. And then I'm gonna add some white to make her eyelids more reflective. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a stroke, a very heavy stroke like this on both sides of her eyelids. 
Then I'm going to set this to transparent and I'm going to push back the shines like that to create that kind of shape. That's usually how I do uh, eyeshadow. So yeah, that's how I always shade a character's head. I hope it was nothing too hard. Really, it's just shade underneath the hair, shade the eyelids, shade the ear, and then just do whatever you want to the nose and then lips. Um, I may have overcomplicated the process a bit just to show you how I do individual things, but really, it shouldn't be anything too hard. So now we're gonna move on to the body, and unlike the head, the body is more complicating because the body has a lot of folds, a lot of shapes to it, Unlike the head, where the head is pretty much just a circle, the body is a little bit more intensive because you really need to understand each shape of your body parts. So before I actually break down the body into shapes, I think it'd be easier if I first roughly shade the body and then explain to you why I shaded where I did. This way you'll have an actual visual instead of me trying to explain a picture to you. So we're just gonna make a lot of like general blobs. And you'll notice that I don't really have line art to define my body shapes, I usually do this through my painting, which is what you're gonna see in a second. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shade underneath her neck. So I like to shade where her head kind of covers her neck. And so I'm gonna just add a bunch of just general blobs of where I believe the shading is. So yeah, that is pretty much just her neck. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw her collarbones because I don't draw collarbones on the line art, I do it through my shading. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two teardrop shapes to the ends of my collarbones. And then I'm just gonna sketch a line that follows the line art that I have here. So just like that, I'm already done with my neck area and my collarbones. The next thing I'm gonna do is move on to this, the chest right here. And usually what I do is I just add a little teardrop shape like that. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to this arm right here and I'm gonna shade first the bicep. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much outline where I want the shadow to be. So I want the shadow to be kind of like this because this is her elbow, this is the middle of her bicep, and then this is the edge of it. And then I'm gonna come over here and just fill in all of this with the skin shade, okay? So, yep, now we have the shading of underneath the bicep. Now what I'm gonna do is come over here and shade the arm. Since I know the light is coming, coming from here, then this side of the arm needs to be shaded. So what I'm gonna do is make a heavy teardrop shape and then I'm just gonna fill in her wrist. So I'm gonna do something kind of like this. Because that's all the side of her arm. This is all the top of her arm, this is the side of her arm. And then I'm just gonna add a little fold right here that goes from her wrist. So that's kind of just the general shape of her arm right here. For her shoulder, I'm really just gonna make um, a line that kind of pillow shades the back of her arm like this. And then following these lines right here, I'm gonna just connect these two lines right here. Because this is the line of her chest, and then this is like the line from her bicep. So if you, if you know anatomy, you know that a line comes from the bicep and connects to like the pectoral of the chest. And then another line comes from here, and I'm just gonna add a teardrop shape like that. And coming to this edge of her body, really all I'm gonna do is add a shape that kind of is thick right here and then goes to thin. Because then this suggests that this part of her back is like behind her while this is like her side. So now we're gonna go to her other arm. Since there's no like perspective to it, it's gonna be relatively easy. So all I really gotta do is just create my outline of the arm and just fill in all of that. So where her elbow is, I wanna draw her elbow. I'm gonna erase some shading, add a crevice to the edge of her elbow. And erase some of this part right here to make that elbow right here. Then I'm gonna take my shading color and like I did for this one, uh, arm right here, I'm gonna add a teardrop shape. And then 
have the rest of the arm go this way. And then this is her hand. I'm just going to fill it in with this like, second shading color. For her shoulder, I'm just going to extend this shading of her neck to go this way. And then I'm going to connect these two lines together that I have right here. Now I'm going to go back to her chest and add this stroke right here between her chest and then add a thicker stroke at the end like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some shading where her clothing presses on her chest. Then we're going to go to her hand. And I know the shape of her hand might be a little complicating, but really all it is is just a rectangle going like this. You can see the rectangle going like that. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my shading color and just add shading all underneath here. And then I'm just going to connect the shading to her wrist right here. So I'm going to go over every single part that I've shaded so far and explain to you why I've shaded there. Okay, so this arm is probably the hardest uh, part to explain. And so I have these two shapes that kind of illustrate what's going on here. So the reason this arm, you have to shade much more of the bottom part than this arm is because this arm you're seeing from the side. So really all you're seeing is like this kind of shape. But because this arm is kind of like a cylinder pointing towards the viewer, it kind of looks like this in a perspective. And so what you're seeing is all of this bottom side, which is much more than this bottom side. So over here is why you see much more shading underneath here. The reason it kind of takes like a little bump like this and then like a shape like that is because this is my elbow right here. Elbows, elbows have like a crevice right here and then they have like like a diamond shape right here. So I'm shading the bottom side of this diamond shape and I'm shading the entire crevice. And then right here is a bump because biceps, you have like a giant circle muscle right here. So it's like a little bump right here. Over here is pretty much just like creases that connect your bicep up here to the underside of your uh, chest right here. And then same thing for this um, line right here. Now on to this upper part of the arm. This entire shape of the arm is kind of like a cylinder like this. And so you're shading pretty much all this underneath here. And the reason the shape kind of looks like this teardrop shape is because the wrist of your arm is kind of more like a rectangle. And then where your like upper arm muscle is, or like where this muscle is, is more of like an oval, which is why this shape follows more of like a rectangular shape. And then this circle is gonna be blurred. So like all of this is gonna be blurred so that it looks more like a sphere. This hand I already explained to you is kind of like a rectangle shape going this way. So really what I'm doing is shading all underneath the bottom side of that rectangle. And then the fingers are nothing complicating since the fingers are all shaded. They're just gonna be all shaded. And now we come to this arm. Like I explained before, the reason this arm isn't as complicating is because you're really just shading all underneath this one, this shape right here. You're adding the crevices to the elbow, then you're shading the crevice to the elbow while shading this underneath like diamond area. You're connecting the shoulder, this uh, same, same thing as like right here where you connect like the bicep muscle to uh, like your pectoral right here. I don't know if I'm naming the muscles right. This arm, once again, should be easier because since you're directly seeing like the shape of it, you're just gonna shade underneath all of this part right here. Going onto her chest, the reason I shade these areas is because this area is being covered by the dress, of course. The reason why the shading increases in thickness over here is because since this clothing is farther away from her chest than up here, it's gonna increase in distance. Same, like, same explanation with the hair. Then over to like the middle of her chest, uh, it's the same exact thing with the hair. The reason you're uh, shading really close right here is because the chest is very close to each other and then they separate. The thickness of this shadow right here is thicker than the thickness of the shadow right here. This is more like a line and then this is more like a triangle. So now hopefully you understand why I shaded exactly what I did. So shading blobs is the second step. The first step was under uh, understanding the shape of what you're coloring, which is what I just explained to you. Uh, what I did now is just I shaded blobs. 
The next step we're gonna do is pretty much just go back and define a lot of what we shaded here. So this is like the gen this is like the sketch of our shading. And we're gonna go back and we're actually gonna uh, refine a lot of our shading. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna add much more hard shadows to these um this neck area. And then what I'm gonna do is take my smudge tool and I'm gonna smudge these teardrop shapes that I have for the collarbone right here. All right, that looks nice. I'm gonna go back and kind of erase some shading to have this part be a lot more uh, defined. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blur tool and then I'm gonna blur a lot of the underside of this shadow right here. And then I'm gonna leave a lot of my hard shadows at the edges of this neck right here while blurring a lot of the middle part. I feel like this uh, shading right here looks a little like too solid. So I'm gonna get, get my uh, base color and very lightly with an airbrush tool, kind of add just like a little gradient above like inside of this shading right here. So now it looks much less uh, one dimensional and there's some gradient to it. Then what I'm gonna do is take my base color and I'm kind of, I'm gonna thin out the lines of this collarbone right here like that. And I'm gonna, gonna do the same to this side. I'm just gonna thin it out a little bit. Then what I'm gonna do is add some shading that follows the curvature of this part right here. So I'm just gonna add a little triangle right here. That follows kind of this shape. And then I'm gonna just blur out the middle part of this triangle. And then this one right here. Okay, and then underneath these collarbones, I'm gonna add like a very light stroke that goes, that kind of like adds shading to the collarbone so that the collarbone feels more like a bonnet and instead of like just two random lines. So now I have that. That's my collarbone right there. Now I'm gonna select all of this area and I want this area to be shaded, but I don't want it to be this color. I want it to be a color lighter than this. I'm gonna add a new layer, fill all of this up, and I'm just gonna adjust the opacity to like the color that I want. So I kind of want like a that color. So yeah, that's now the underside of my neck. So yeah, that is now like my neck. It's a very good looking neck, isn't it? And then I'm gonna move on to her chest. So what I'm gonna do down here is I'm gonna go to this teardrop shape and do the circle, the circle technique that you've seen me do, where I circle around over here. And then I'm gonna erase the part that follows the shape of right here. I'm also gonna add a hard shadow, kind of like that, and then I'm gonna blur out the outside part of it. So now I have this. Then I'm gonna go to this crease between it, make it a little bit more thinner. I don't like how thick I made it, like that. And then I'm gonna take my blur tool and blur the bottom part of this triangle right here and then go ahead and redefine, just fix some things that I blurred on accident. I'm gonna take my base color and add a little bit of reflective lighting in the middle of it so that it looks less flat. See, everything's starting to shape out pretty nicely. Then I'm gonna go ahead and kind of thin out the strokes I made here as well. And then I'm gonna blur the middle of it like this because when you're pushing up against the chest, the chest isn't like uh, rigid. So it's not gonna make very hard shadows. It's gonna make like uh, like more softer looking shadows that are pretty defined, but they're like uh, soft. So yeah, now I'm done with the chest area. I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the bicep and like the shoulder and stuff right here. So since the shoulder is a sphere, I wanna blur like the middle of this part right here and bring back some of my hard shadows. Now for the bicep, I'm gonna blur all of this from here all the way to the crevice of the elbow. And I'm gonna blur this a lot. So then it looks like that. And then what I'm gonna do is get my base color and kind of thin out this stroke that I made right here. I don't like how thick it is. So I'm kind of gonna try to thin it out. And then I'm gonna blur this part right here. Yep, that's pretty much my bicep. Now, since this bicep should have like reflective lighting on the bottom side, it kind of looks weird that it's like one solid color. I'm gonna add 
an airbrush tool of my base color and kind of adjust the opacity of it to be like exactly where I want it. So I want it to be pretty much like, like right there. So that's pretty good to me. I'm gonna erase probably some of the edge right here. And so yeah, I want it to have this much reflective lighting all over the bottom and then I'm gonna merge it. I'm gonna go to my elbow and I'm gonna add back some of that shading that I kind of lost from adding this reflective lighting. I'm gonna add a crevice right here and then I'm gonna add a triangle shape because since my elbow is kind of like a diamond shape, this is what the bottom of it looks like. And then to show that this is like the side of uh, the bicep, I'm gonna add shading right here to kind of emphasize that this is the side of the bicep. Same reason how I emphasize this is like the back of the torso, I'm gonna show that this is like the side of uh, the arm right here. Now going on to the upper arm, I'm gonna blur a lot of this shape right here until like about before the wrist hits. So I'm gonna shade all of this right here. And then once again, I'm gonna add some indirect lighting just to make it look more soft and add like a gradient so it doesn't look as harsh. I'm gonna go to these strokes that I added right here and just blur them in the middle and leave the hard edges on there. Yep, that is pretty much my arm at that point. So as you can see, that is now my arm. So that is a pretty nice looking arm. I didn't do anything too complicating, just blurring it, fixing some edge shadows, and then just adding like a gradient to make it look softer. Now onto the hand. The hand, I'm pretty much gonna, just gonna keep the shape that it has now. So I'm gonna just take my blur brush and then just blur the middle part of right here. Pretty much all I'm gonna do for the hand. And then I'm gonna add some indirect lighting, like, like right there. And then I'm gonna fix the color of these fingers because I just want them to be one uniform color. So now let's move on to the armpit. For this armpit, I'm gonna blur the middle part of the underside of the arm and make sure I have those hard shadows in. I'm gonna take my smudge tool and I'm gonna smudge the inside of this crease right here, as well as this one right here. And notice I'm not doing circles, I'm doing like straight lines because I want these two strokes to look more like triangles instead of like a circle like this one. So I'm gonna do this. Up and down. Same thing for this one. This one I'm just gonna go up and down. Like that. Then I'm gonna add some of the armpit wrinkles. So what I'm gonna do is make like a crease going like this, and then another crease with the base color going like this. And then I'm just gonna smudge the edges of it like this. And like how I did for the neck, I'm gonna take this color, base color, and just fill in all of this with that base color. Or sorry, shade color. I'm gonna fill in all of this with my shade color. And I'm gonna just lower it to how I want it to be. And I'm gonna blur these sides so that it's not as sharp. This. So then I'm gonna merge it. I'm gonna blur the middle of this back right here. And then I'm also gonna blur that edge right there. I'm gonna add, some, add back some of the hard shadows that I kind of lost. So like that. And yeah, that's the armpit right there. And I'm gonna go back to this chest area and kind of shade like, since these two are circles, I wanna add some of the circular shading that I kind of missed. So I'm gonna go back, add like a curve right here and kind of fill in this curve by just pressing lightly. And then I'm gonna take my smudge tool and kind of uniformly try, like, try to make the color uniform here. And then I'm gonna blur, since this is a sphere, remember I'm gonna have to blur like the middle of it. So then I have that. And yeah, that is pretty much all of the right side of my body completed. Now let's go to this arm. This arm should probably be easier than this arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing I did where I blurred the middle of this entire arm from this crease right here all the way to the, right before the elbow indent. And then I'm gonna take my airbrush tool and just add some reflective lighting and then just adjust the opacity of it. So I want it to be like that. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in what was lost for the elbow and then blur the top of the elbow 
Did I do that for this side? Oh, I, don't, I didn't. Yeah, I want to blur the, uh, like, this part of the elbow. So, like, the, where the edges meet, right here. Then for the upper arm, I'm going to go ahead and blur all of this. And then leave the hard shadows in over here, and then just blur all of this. And then I'm going to go ahead, take my airbrush tool, just add indirect lighting. And then, actually, I'm going to add something like this. And then just blur the middle of it. Maybe, maybe the same for this side. I'll leave something like that. And that's my arm. And now all I got to do is fix this thing going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smudge kind of like where these lines are connecting. Like that. I'm going to blur it. On like the middle part, part. And then thin out the line that like where it meets right here. And then I'm going to take the base color and just kind of add some folds right here. Or like a, cre a crease or whatever. I'm going to add another crease right here too. I feel like there should be a crease here. And then I might add some indirect lighting to the back of this arm right here. I don't really like how tough it looks. Oh, I also forgot. Since this arm is directly laying on top of this arm, like part of the arm, I'm going to add some shading here to show that. I'm going to do something like that and then just blur probably like this part of it. Because remember, since the arm is getting farther away, the shadow is going to be more far than it would be over here. I forgot to add some shady color right here with the airbrush tool. So I'm going to do that. And yeah, the skin is now pretty much done. As you can see, shading itself is not that hard. For example, I just literally had a teardrop shape right there and just blurred it over, like all on this side. Under the neck, I just had a simple shading shape like this and I just blurred all on this side. Shading itself is not hard. What is very hard is to understand what you should be shading and how to like emphasize the shape of what you're coloring. So what I really wanna emphasize is to break down your body into simple shapes. Like how I did for this arm right here where it was like pretty much like a cylinder going forward cylinder cylinder circle cylinder stuff like that you really want to understand the shape of what you're coloring because that's going to make it easier to understand where you should be placing your shadows what you should be blurring and it just makes the process a whole lot more simpler so yep that's the end of the tutorial i hope that this has helped you understand more how to shade skin and i'm sorry it was kind of long if this has helped you, I would appreciate it if you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you think a friend also needs help with shading skin, share this video with them. Anyways, that's it. Thank you for Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you next time. See ya.